Okay, we're good? Awesome, thank you. Everyone can hear me and him? Everybody can hear me as well? Right, Sweet. Cool. Well, welcome to conference. How's, uh, how's the conference going so far? Yeah? Hopefully you've been learning some cool stuff. Um, you're going to learn some cool stuff in this session, too. It's nice, short, and sweet. Uh, how to get started with embedded analytics. So my name is Alex Cortez. I'm a product consultant, so think of me as like a pre-sales consultant. Uh, I work with our sales team, but I'm more on the technical side. My name is Jeremy Mayo. I am a sales consultant, so I'm uh, in the field with those sales reps, uh, talking to customers about how they want to take Tableau and embed it into their application, whether that be internally or customer facing. Um, based out of the Austin office, as is uh, my peer here, Alex. Awesome. So we, we'll have time at the end for questions. Uh, Want to get through all the content first. It'll be like 10 minutes, maybe even 15 for questions. And uh, I just want to get a quick pulse check. Like, how many are expecting this session to be introductory? OK. I would have hoped for more hands, because this is an introductory session. So we will go through code, um, examples. We'll talk about all that stuff. But just keep in mind, it is introductory. So you know, if you were looking for super advanced stuff, uh, this might be too simple for you. Um, that said, this is really great information. And there's some stuff in here that even people who have been embedding analytics don't know about. So I think it's still valuable to spend time here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So if you went to Devs on stage this morning, you may have seen this slide before. But you know, they're, they're continually and rapidly growing that program uh, to make Tableau as a platform. Um, we are going to be focusing on embedded analytics today solely within this, pro within this session. A little bit of automation. But um, you know, if you have other interests around integrating Tableau, we definitely want you to check out other sessions on extensions, data connectivity, as well as data science. Um, they're all very helpful when it comes to um, really uh, integrating Tableau inside of another application. Um, and, and we hope you find those valuable as well. So how many of you would say you're a developer? OK. And then there's plenty of you who aren't. Can you raise your hand? Excellent. So we kept that in mind. Um, we're going to be showing code. So if you're a developer, you know, that, that's for you. Um, if you're not a developer, then just follow along. right? You don't have to understand all the code. It's more about the integration. And I'll point that out. And uh, you know, you'll be able, we'll, we'll give you resources so that you can get started um, on that development. Uh, now, you might be wondering why we have Batman and Robin shirts. It's because this guy's obsessed with Batman, right? And uh, it's I, really you, just because it's awesome. So. I mean, you know, whatever right. you want to, whatever, dude. <laughs> Notice I'm wearing the Robin shirt. Yeah. I couldn't pull off the tall, dark, and handsome. I tried. Didn't okay. work. <laughs> uh, no comment, Jeremy. <laughs> um, so real quickly, we're, we're, we're going to get started real quick. But you know, I just want you to keep in mind as we go through this presentation, um, you know, if you're not already embedding analytics, or you are, just think about how this could fit into your organization. Right? So you're going to see content, but I want it to be relevant to your organization. Everybody in here does something differently, right? or they have a different need for embedded analytics. So just think about that as we go through this content. The agenda is really easy. We're going to go through three sections. First two are going to take about five to 10 minutes. It's not going to take long. And then we're going to dive into the code. So we're going to define what embedded analytics is. We're going to show you some real examples. Jeremy's going to talk why, you know, talk you through why you should do it. Uh, our customers are finding embedded analytics to be very beneficial for their organizations. And then we're going to get into the actual code and examples, all the different technologies involved, which are the two APIs, and how do you authenticate users, right? That's pretty much the whole picture here. Um, so we're going to start with what is embedded analytics. And Gartner defines it as this. Embedded analytics is the use of reporting and analytic capabilities in transactional business applications. It must be easily accessible from inside the application without forcing users to switch between systems. OK? Um, so it's about taking Tableau and putting it somewhere where these, these end users already go to. Right? That's embedding analytics. And here's some examples. 
So we have customers that are embedding in SharePoint, Salesforce, um, internal wikis, you know, customer portals, websites, blogs, you name it. They're doing it all. Uh, and, and that's what's great about these APIs is that you can pretty much embed wherever, right? And so let me show you some real examples here. I'm going to show you three examples. So this first one's very simple. There's not a lot of integration here. Uh, this is just a consumption report of blood alcohol content. And as we scroll through this website, you'll see Biz is embedded, right? Here's a Tableau Biz. Um, they don't try to hide the fact that it's Tableau. There's no particular look and feel that they're going for, right? They're just, what they're really doing is taking an embed code that we give you and they're just pasting it into the page. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So this is an example of something that's not really tightly integrated, but customers want to do it. Here's something that's a little more integrated, actually a lot more. So this is a portal that one of our partners uh, uh, created, Zeo Matrix. They're actually here at conference if you want to talk to them about embedded solutions. But they created this portal and they sent it over to me. And uh, let, me, let me show this to you. So first of all, it doesn't say Tableau anywhere, right? So they're, they're sort of white labeling this experience. And it's kind of hard to see, especially if you're in the back, but there's some buttons up here. Um, so first of all, I had to authenticate, right? I had to authenticate into the system. And then these buttons allow me to do things like download data, um, export to PDF, write back to the database, this kind of stuff. Over here on the left, I can navigate to different dashboards. And then here, I can sort of customize my filters, right? So this is a pretty typical uh, example of a custom portal that we see, okay? Now I'll give you one more example. This is the Purdue University Data Digest. So this is public data. Uh, anybody can view this, but what Purdue's done is they've used our APIs to customize it. And really what they're going for here is a look and feel, right? That's pretty obvious. As you scroll down through these thumbnails, of these dashboards, it's very clear that they're going for that sort of yellow, gold, black uh, look here, right? And as I click on these tabs, some nice effects, right? But the APIs are able to pull in this information. And then once I click into a viz, I actually embed the viz. So again, we're, we're using one of the APIs here. And, uh, and then here's some custom buttons, right? What did I mention? Download to PDF, export to cross tab, resetting the filters, um, you know, the dashboard is still totally interactive. So this is kind of in between, right? It's, it's integrated um, more tightly than the report or the website, but there's no login, right? So clearly there's a big landscape here and you might fall anywhere on that landscape. And we're gonna show you all the things that you need regardless of where you are. Okay, so why should you do it? Well, why should you do it, Alex? Yeah, so I deal with customers that are asking those questions every day. You know, why do they want to do this? Um, but their main goals are really to, to share their, their insights that they found with their data. You know, every one of my customers either have a, a, a bunch of data that they either need to share internally with the rest of their organization, so they might want to post that somewhere on uh, SharePoint or Wiki, uh, or even Salesforce. Uh, other customers, we consider those typically more the, kind of the OEM or the embedded customer. They are taking those insights that they've created from whatever application that their customers use and provide analytics back to those users. And, and, and they monetize that in a way so that they can either roll that into it as a product or sell it to them along with whatever they're already purchasing, right? Um, another reason that they're doing this is, be, is so that they can differentiate themselves from their competitors. And when I, I mean, doing that so a lot of their peers may already be providing analytics to their end customers or to their end users. So in a, in a way they need to catch up to them or just stay ahead of the game. So they want to make sure that they continue to stay in that magic quadrant. Um, the buy versus build is a discussion we often have a lot. Um, they, can, you know, they can decide whether they want to wrap around something like Tableau or just, you know, do some simple Google charts or some D3. Um, and those are, those are great for the simplistic nature of them. But when it, when it comes time to scale, 
and continue to deploy on a very rapid basis where for a large number of customers, it becomes a little bit more difficult. You've got to pay those developers to continue to update those visualizations and, and with, with new data um, to provide better insights to those users. Finally, um, just a consolidation of resources. So you might be using Tableau internally now. You know, you've got a team of analysts. Then you've also got your database team, maybe a security team as well. By you know, consolidating that team together, you're, you're able to um, really come up with a, a, a powerful message to provide to those users with the, with, with the analytics. So by wrapping it inside of something like a wiki or, or another product, um, you're enhancing those, those features uh, as you go along. Now, why would we want to do this with Tableau? You know, pretty straightforward answer, right? I mean, time to market is easy. Um, we're going to show you how quick and easy it is to set up an embed. Um, we're going to do it here within this hour. Um, so you can just imagine get, you know, providing this to your customer base, how quick it is to get set up and rolling. Uh, the dashboard interactivity we all know and love within Tableau, that is always a selling feature, of course. And, a, and, and finally, the self-service model. So not only are you able to embed Tableau and allow them to uh, you know, further dive into analytics, but you can also Im embed things like the web authoring feature, right? So if you're using WebEdit today on Tableau server, that's something that you could also provide to your users um, to allow them to continue to drill into that data. All right, this is the fun part. So how do we get started? Well, there's three pieces here. I mentioned the JavaScript API, the REST API, and authentication, right? So for me, most embedded deployments start by testing out the JavaScript API. Can you get a simple embed in a web page, right? That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do a very basic embed. Um, and, and first of all, let me tell you what the JavaScript API does. So the API, the JavaScript API is what allows you to physically take a Tableau visualization and embed it in an application. That is its main purpose. Um, it's very important if you're going for a specific look and feel, a custom look and feel, a custom experience. Because we have easier ways to do that physical embedding. And I'll show you what those are. But it actually doesn't take any more effort to do it with the API. Okay, so here's the use case, um, internal use case. I, I lead an inventory team, and we've got a bunch of dead inventory. We need to get it out of the warehouse, um, but we obviously don't want to lose a lot of profit, right? So there's a dashboard. I built a portal for my team, and there's a dashboard that we frequently go to. So this is the portal, and this is what we're going to build. So this is the finished product. But what we're going to do is we're going to start in Tableau server, because this is where all embedded deployments start. So first, I need to navigate to that dashboard in Tableau server. Okay? So that visualization needs to get built. It needs to get published to the server, and people need to have access to it. And so you know, for some customers, just having their clients go to Tableau server is, is a solution. Uh, we've seen that before. But we want to build that customized experience, that custom portal. Right? So where does that begin? Well, notice here, if I click on Share, um, I pull up this little window, and it gives me what's called an embed code. Okay? So what I can do is copy that. So I'm just doing a quick Control-C here. And then I'm going to go back to Sublime. So this is just an empty HTML page. There's nothing on it. And I'm going to paste that code. That's all I've done. I'm going to save it, OK? And then I'm going to open this in the browser. And there you go. That's a simple embed. So that was no coding. That was copy and paste. Anybody can do that, right? So this is the simplest way to embed with Tableau. Um, it's not tightly integrated at all. And this is actually what these people did, right? So they just took that code, pasted it in the relevant place, and so it just renders in the right part of the website. That's all they did, right? Now, that's easy. I think we all agree. But I want to show you that it's just as easy with the API, OK? So what we're going to do is instead of copying this embed code, and actually, yeah, instead of copying this embed code, see the link option? We're going to copy that. So I'm going to 
just copy that. And then there's one extra step here. So this article, uh, you can find it if you just Google Tableau Basic Embed. This will come up every time. What's great about this is if you scroll to the bottom, and this is our official documentation, by the way. If you scroll to the bottom, there's code to copy, okay? So this is using the JavaScript API. So what I can do is copy that code, go back to Sublime. In fact, I can start with just a blank uh, page, paste that code, save this, and then let's go back to our browser and render that page again. So we'll just hit refresh here and check it out. Now, it's not the dashboard I wanted, right? All I did was copy and paste that code. This is actually how I start every embed. So the only extra step here, remember that link, this guy? You're going to copy that, and you're just going to replace that in the code. So if we go back to the code here, and by the way, can you all see this? I can make it bigger if it's too small. You can see it? Um, see this URL right here? You're just going to replace that because that's referencing the viz for that article. So we need to point it to our server. So I'm just going to paste that URL. Here's a quick trick, not necessary, but everything after this question mark here, those are just uh, parameters, and you don't need them. So what I often do, again, not necessary, but to just to clean things up, I just remove that part of the URL. So everything including the question mark and after just like that. I'm going to save this. We're going to go refresh that page. And there you go. We have our viz on our Tableau server using the JavaScript API to embed. So it's, it's really just one extra step. You copy and paste that code, and then you copy and paste the URL. Right? And so this is why I recommend doing it with the API, because now you can do stuff like this. Okay, and this is really cool because let me show you a couple of examples here. So notice this button here to go to the price table. So what happens is I set up a bunch of filters and parameters on that first dashboard to decide what I'm going to price these items at, and then it, pop, it populates this list here, or this dashboard, right? And so here's my, my new pricing. Um, so that's just sort of like inter workbook navigation. You can do all that in desktop. But what I want to show you is you can do this externally as well. So see this Navigate to New Prices button? You know, I can set filters on this dashboard um, just to show you that. So I've switched to Office Supplies. Navigate to New Prices, I click on my custom button, and then that takes me to the new dashboard filtered to that value. So that's a more custom experience. And then once I'm here, what I actually want to do is print out this list and send it over to my inventory team, or my pricing team. So I've got a little export data call here. And I can export that data as a CSV, and then just ship that over. Right? We get that request very often. Um, similarly, I can print a PDF. Right? That is very uh, requested by our customers. So all these little custom buttons and, and the look and feel here, you can't do that with a basic embed. Okay? Even with the, uh, with the embed code that I showed you in the beginning, you can't do that. So that's why we use the JavaScript API. And I just showed you that it's just as easy to use. So now what I want to do is actually build this portal with you um, over the next couple of minutes. So I've got all my code here. Um, there's five different iterations. So this code, this is just the basic portal itself. So let me open that up for you. So this is just this. This is the portal, no viz embedded. This is just HTML, OK? Um, and in, in fact, it's exactly what you saw here. Um, this is the HTML behind it. And by the way, I'm not a developer, so if you see flaws with the, road I the, the way I wrote HTML, don't point it out. Like I, you know, this is just this is not what I'm trying to teach you. Um, I understand there's other ways to do it, but it's so easy that even I could learn it. You know, Jeremy and I, we're not developers. so. Um, let me show you the first iteration of this. I'm going to open up the next iteration, which is just that portal with the viz embedded. And I think 
you know where I'm going with this. It's just copy and paste. So if I open up Sublime again, and I go to that second iteration, um, the difference between this code and the previous code is just two things. It's this code right here. OK? What I've just highlighted, that's the first difference. And that is just copy and paste from that article. right? All this stuff. Because what it is, it's just a function that I'm defining. It's an in, uh, initialized viz function. And it requires three things. So we're trying to create a viz object. And to create a viz object, I need to supply the div from the HTML. So where is it going to go? What element on that page? I need to provide the URL, which is copy and paste. And then these options, these are just different parameters. Um, often people want to hide the toolbar. You can do that here. But basically, once you have those three things, you can create this viz object. And then if you scroll down, notice that when I load this body, the body of this HTML page, I'm just going to run that function. Okay, That's all that I'm doing here. There's nothing extra. And again, if we go back to, uh, where was it? Here it is. I've literally just copy and pasted this part of the code right here, because this is the, the function. Um, so again, just copy and paste, putting it in the right place, and then that gives you uh, this right here. OK? So now we're going to go into the next iteration. Um, we're going to add this button, and then we're actually going to implement it so that I can navigate to another sheet in that workbook. And that sheet can be a dashboard. It can be an actual Tableau sheet. Um, it just means like in that workbook, that Twibix file, pivoting over to a different tab. And so let me show you the difference in that code. So again, this is what we just looked through. Portal 3. What's the difference here? Can someone point it out? Exactly. There's another function that I defined here. Okay. This function right here, switch view. This one takes in a parameter. So the parameter that you supply is the name of the sheet you want to switch to in the workbook. And notice here, I'm actually creating a workbook object. So there's different objects. There's like a hierarchy in Tableau. Um, there's the viz. There's the workbook. There's a site. And you know we'll get into that later. But um, notice that now that I have the viz object, I can run a method. And this is all referenced in the API. These are just things that are, it's like a library, right? You just call on it, and it works. Um, so you run that get workbook method, which gives you back the workbook object. And then now that you have the workbook object, you can run its own set of methods. So one of those methods is exactly this, activate sheet async. That's just the method that switches you over to a different tab. Okay. And then it takes in that parameter, so it knows what tab to switch to. And then, of course, you got to call on the function. So if we scroll down here to the bottom, this little HTML I added. So this is just creating a button, right? And then when I click on that button, I want you to run that function. That's all I'm doing. And that gets you this, OK? I'll show you two more things, and then we'll switch over to the REST API. This is another button, right? This is exporting data. So again, the use case here was I need this list of prices so that I can export that. Very simple to do, very simple to do. So here we go. Uh, it's, it's another function. And in fact, it's just basically just one line of code running this, you know, everything. That's why the APIs are great, because it's all there for you. You don't have to invent the wheel again. So show export crosstab dialog. That's the method that shows you that little dialog, right, to export the data. Um, and then we have to call that function down below. OK? So that's how that works. I'm going to show you one more thing um, before I hand it back over. So this was the full portal that we started with. Notice that I have this dashboard navigation on the left. So when I click on sales, this goes to a completely different workbook and loads a different dashboard. That could be even a totally server, a totally different server instance, for example, 
right, in a different cluster somewhere. That could be a different site on the same Tableau server. It doesn't matter, but let me show you what it takes to be able to navigate between workbooks like that. It's one more function, or, or sorry, that's the printed PDF. Um, no, it's this piece here. So notice I've taken this code, which is that original initialize viz function. I've copied it and pasted it down below and called it something else, initialize viz sales. So this is me um, just pulling in the URL for that other dashboard. So again, it's copy and paste. And now that I've done that, fun that I've written out that function, I can actually call on it down below. So when I click on this link, I run that initialized viz sales dashboard instead, okay? So again, copy and paste, um, you know, I can figure that out. Our APIs are really easy to look through the reference. Um, you can usually do like a control F on that and you'll get to the method that you need to. Uh, but yeah, that's the JavaScript API. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Jeremy or Robin uh, and then he can go through the rest API. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna look at a little bit more code, but um, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the REST API and kind of get into that automation topic of discussion because he talked about an internal use case, you know, creating a you know, simple portal for you know, just providing basic analytics to your, in, your internal users. But we want to provide a lot of analytics to a lot of users because we have a lot of customers. So how do we, how do, we do that with you know, with some of the automation tools that we have at our, at our avail. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple different examples of, actually I'm gonna walk you through one example, but I'm gonna step through this particular page because it happens so daggum fast. So um, we're gonna be creating two sites. I've got two customers. Um, we are a distribution company and we sell other partners, um, you know, products and goods. Um, two of those being Cisco and Xerox. We're going to create a site for them on Tableau um, we're going to add a couple of users to each of those sites, as well as create a project folder for the viz that we will eventually upload to each of those sites. So that, that viz is going to be the same exact workbook, but just a little bit of different color coordination because we want it to make it, want it to, uh, want it to look and feel like you know, the color scheme for each of those customers. So, uh, and then finally, I'll walk you through the portal as to how that's going to work. jump over, but before I do that, I want to show you what that portal kind of looks like. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There and th go. this is the only association with uh, Batman. So I think we just really wanted to wear these shirts. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So as I said, Wayne Enterprise, we're a distribution company. I want to provide a quick access portal for my users to log in and get some basic analytics around how their products are doing within our distribution chains. All right. Um, I've got John at Cisco, he's gonna log in. And notice, first thing we see, you're not a Tableau server user, sorry, you're not getting any analytics whatsoever. Get out of my portal. <laughs> um, well, we'll log him out. That's fine, that's cool. Let's get John added um, so that he can see some analytics. Now, I'm gonna be doing this using the REST API, and namely one of our libraries that we have available. So, um, the REST API, for those that don't know, is used to automate things like what I'm about to do. So adding users, creating sites, uploading content, downloading content um, for the Tableau server. Now, um, we have a number of libraries. So if you are a developer, we have a library in Python, as well as Java, C Sharp, uh, and our peer uh, actually writes a, a different Python library and manages it, uh, but I'm gonna be using that today. It's called Tableau Tools. If you've not heard of it, um, <laughs> I think we, Got one. Um, if you have not heard of it, go to Tableau and Behold, uh, where uh, my peer Bryant actually manages and constantly does blog posts about it. So uh, we're going to run through that. I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that a little better. And I'm going to walk through this code. It's it's a little, I wouldn't say it's lengthy. It's just uh, kind of involved, right? Uh, so the first couple of things we need to do, obviously. We need to connect to that API, so I'm gonna grab that and import it into my Python script. This is all being run through uh, a little emulator called Jupyter. I don't know if anybody used that before, but it's a great little tool. Uh, I need to grab a little bit of metadata, so first 
We're going to get that server name. I'm going to connect locally to my server here. Um, get my user credentials, of course. Uh, we'll be creating this site called Analytics. Excuse me. We'll be creating a project for Analytics um, within these two sites, Cisco and Xerox, and then adding those users and providing a site role to each of them. So we'll be giving one of them the admin credentials, and the other will get an explorer right over here. Finally, I'll be uploading a workbook that's just sitting local on my machine. Now, in most often the case, you'll probably have a network share somewhere that you're going to point to. Um, I know we're only doing two users and two sites, and so you're probably thinking, that's great. How do you do a whole bunch of them? Well, you know, as you're a developer, you probably figure out you can just add a list to it, whether it be a CSV or point it to a data source, uh, where you might have a data table of users. So as we jump into the code, the first thing that we're going to have to do is actually sign into Tableau Server. So we'll be using those admin credentials that I, put, I pointed to earlier to sign into the REST API. Um, then I'm going to loop through and iterate through those sites and, and uh, create them one by one on the Tableau Server side. Uh, I'll get a response back, let me know that that site was created, and then it'll jump in and jump into that actual site and finally start adding those users here. Once the users are added, of course, we'll create those uh, projects, and finally, we'll upload that workbook itself. Now, this takes a matter of seconds because it's just a couple of sites and a couple of users and one workbook for each. Uh, but I want to show what that server actually looks like right now. It's a pretty bare-bones server, so this is my, my local host. I get logged in. Notice I've only got zero sites. I've got the default site. That's what we're sitting on right now. So we'll go ahead and run this code. It should just take a matter of a couple seconds. So we've got one site created. We've added the two users. We're uploading that content. Content's created. Going, moving on to site number two, same, and we're done. If I jump back over to my Tableau server, just hit refresh, although it actually did it for me, I've got a pair of sites for Cisco and Xerox, and those users were created in the content as well. If I jumped into one of, one of these, right, analytics project was, was there, and the workbook that I want them to see is also there. So that's cool, but let's go back to my portal, uh, where, the, where my formatting is way off. We'll log back in with John at Cisco. And we're automatically given a viz. We know it's Cisco's site. Here we are up here on the left, and then I've color coordinated that visualization, that error here. And we'll do the same with Xerox. Give uh, Michael one of his views. Same thing, right? So color coordinated is viz, but Michael now has a site. User login. He can he, he can get into the portal and you know get the analytics that we told him we would provide to him. So now we jump back over to the stack here. So the one thing you saw um, that we didn't really get into but was the authentication component of it. So I just provided a simple username and password for those users uh, to jump into the portal. And you know, with Tableau, we can connect and integrate to any one of you know, these four that you see here from, for a single sign-on method. The idea is that you're not having the user to log in twice, right? When they log into your portal, cool, but then if they see that Oh, sign into Tableau Server, well, they, they don't know what that is, so they're not going to do anything about it. But by using single sign-on, we can connect to or integrate with SAML. So if you have a, you know, a, an SSO that you want to use today, we're more than, more than likely going to be able to connect to it. Though, I will say, and the one I used today, because it is the easiest and most lightweight, is trusted authentication. So that's Tableau's way of basically trusting your front-end web application and trusting that it has done the authentication piece, and you're simply passing the username over to Tableau. Now, you've got all kinds of proxies in place, so you can't you know, let the users into wherever they need to be, but you're basically saying, I've logged in. Here, I got Jeremy. Send Jeremy's name over to Tableau. Tableau says, OK, yep, Jeremy's a user on Tableau. Here is a trusted ticket or a token. It's a very long alphanumeric string that gets passed back to the user that then gets applied to the URL of the visualization. Um, and it can only be redeemed once. So users can't click the back button and try to refresh it or spoof the name, right? And it's all done because you've already put, you've already laid the authentication piece in place. 
using whatever mechanism you already have. Here's a, just a simple diagram as to how that might work. You know, I'm logging in, of course, to my portal. Um, go, the first thing that happens is the authentication from your web application, and I talked about passing that username back to back and forth to Tableau server to, before I can actually get my visualization. Now that user is not gonna magically appear in Tableau server, so you, that's something that has to be created. So if you were to just you know, stand up and connect to Tableau server without those users in place, you would obviously have to use some form of synchronization so that that user is sitting inside of Tableau server. They do need a username and credential to log in. So before we get to questions, um, I know some people like to leave early uh, if you don't have questions. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to run through the end of this presentation, and then we'll go back to the questions because we've got plenty of time. Uh, if this was too introductory for you, there are other sessions, right? And these are some of the ones that we recommend. Are any of these happening tomorrow? Do we know? The ones that say tomorrow. Oh, really? <laughs> I should, I should, nah, I'm kidding. You want me uh, to do it? No, it's okay, okay man, cool. I got it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, portal in 60 minutes or less, that's Gordon, uh, really smart guy. That's more advanced than what you saw today. So that's a good session. Um, we promised you resources, so this developer program is new. We're really excited about that. Check it out. Uh, everything's on GitHub. Uh, and I'll leave this up for a second because I know you're taking pictures. Um, everything's on GitHub. And there's a really good resource called the Embedded Analytics Playbook. When I switch over in a second, you'll see the link for that. Uh, that is like the first place you should go if you want to learn and read more about this stuff because it links out to everything else. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and switch here. I keep seeing people just, yeah. Everybody get it? Yeah? Okay, so this is the second one. Um, so that playbook, that should be the first thing you check out. That goes through everything, all the technologies involved, all of the different configurations you can do. And uh, these other two links are just two flavors of the REST API, two wrappers. So the one he used today, Tableau Tools. Uh, there's also the Tableau Server Client Library, which is the officially supported one. Uh, got plenty of customers on both of them. So check out the playbook. Everybody got it? Awesome. Um, we'd really appreciate it if you provided feedback. You're probably having to do that a lot, but uh, we'd appreciate it if you did it for ours. Um, you know, we're probably going to do this again in the future, so we just want to know what we did right and what we could do better. And you know, just thank you for coming to our session. Really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but now, we'll just go back to questions. If you want to leave, feel free. If you want to stick around, we'll answer questions. Yep. Thank you. We got one in the back. We got one here, and then. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, Purdue. It, it, Repeat the question. Okay, so yeah, the question is with the, Purdue, with the Purdue account, you know, how did that visualization appear without logging into the portal? So, Purdue, I don't know if they're using public or if they're using um, the guest account yeah. of their Tableau server. But so, with Tableau server, if you have an on prem server, um, specifically a core license, that, that provides a guest account, and that's how they might be logging in. The alternative would be. They, because it's Purdue University, it's likely public data, they can publish that to Tableau Public and render it from there, similar to way, the way uh, the, the Backtrack did their embed as well. So that leads to my second question. Um, because we are, we are server-based and we don't use guest account because all our stuff is done internally through an AD mm -hmm. security group, and we are core-based. So when we switch to the new licensing structure, yes. how does that still work? If you, we're not, we don't use Tableau Public, so maybe that's why it's a little foreign to me what was going on. Sure. Uh, there's going to have to be some form of an authentication method. The guest account doesn't apply to the named user model. Okay. That's what I need to yeah. know. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. In the named user model, every person needs a license. So that's how you get around that, public or the guest account. Go ahead. Oh, wait. We had one over we here. We had one up front. And then, and then we'll go back to you. I promise. <laughs> Is 
Thank you. I have a question regarding responsiveness about the web application, because here I felt like, okay, with 1,000 pixels, I eat 600 pixels, but what if I want to display my dashboard on multiple devices? On, uh, so, outputting to multiple devices? Yeah, we get that question a lot. The great part about Tableau and the new, uh, uh, it's not, not necessarily new, but back in 10.3, I think it was, we added the utility called a, de a device designer. So when you're developing the content for the first time in Tableau Desktop, you can actually decide, all right, I've got a view here. If it shows up in the browser, it's going to be 1,000 by 600. But uh, through the de device designer, you can def design or define the footprint of the mobile landscape. So if you've got mobile users, you can actually use the device designer to scale it down so that it automatically renders on the, uh, the, the browser and the phone. Same with tablets, right? So we have a couple different de uh, devices that are in there that you can design against. And when, what happens is within Tableau, um, those are actually, uh, they, they respond to the browser that it's being opened from. So it will automatically render at that size footprint. But I think, okay, I didn't do it myself, but from what I understood, we had to define like three dashboards because it's like three different devices. No, 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 no. So one dashboard. One dashboard. You publish one dashboard, you create one dashboard, but the device preview allows you to create three versions within that workbook. Within the same workbook. And it's real simple. You click on iPhone, and then the window shrinks down, and then you resize everything, right? And then you're like, okay, good. Now let me do the same thing for desktop. And then when you publish, you're done. You don't have yeah. to publish three times or one for every device. You're just setting a form factor for whatever device that they're going to be logging in from, if you know, right? So, and it's, it's saved to the workbook metadata, so it's called up once the, the, the viz is starting to fire. Okay. Thank you. you yeah. All right. Uh, we had you next, I believe. Back there. And then we'll go over here. Oh, oh it was actually back row. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, so real quick, uh, th was this videotaped, this session? I hope so. <laughs> okay, good. We did one so. yesterday, and I want to say that one was videotaped, but I don't know that this one was today. Okay. Um, so we'll be able to call it up afterwards, after sure. the conference. Okay. Yeah. The other thing is uh, for licensing and access, like the first example you showed, like where you're embedding it into the website, really, like a passive view. Um, if you're going to passively display that on a website, um, can like someone see that view or do they need to log in in some way, shape or form? So that's very similar to the question that he asked a minute ago in the back. Right. Um, if you want anybody to be able to view that, there's either going to be there's one model that would basically leverage that. Um, it's called the, a guest account from a core server model. Okay. So if you, if you have a Tableau server today, there's two models, right, named and core. Um, if you're using the core license scheme, you get a guest account on that server. Okay. Named model does not have it. So if you had a named server and you wanted to provide access to it, um, each of those users logging into that portal would have to have a Tableau server seat as well. Now, Alternatively, if you're using public data, um, you could use Tableau, something like Tableau Public, to build a, or publish a viz to, uh, and then embed from that. So you could use the embed code there. Okay, but so you don't again, have to pass credentials. Is, like, yeah, you wouldn't have to pass credentials for that. Okay. But the data is open, right? It's not secure at that point. So if you're looking for any form of security, then you're definitely going to look at some model of authentication in place. Now, keep in mind the JS API does work with Tableau Public as well. Yes. So you're not limited just because you're on public. The last uh, kind of piggyback on that, so like someone, if you did use Tableau Public, would the guest have to be a member of Tableau Public to see? No, 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 anybody could see yeah. that because at that point there's no authentication. Yeah. There's no not even a guest account on public. It's, it's literally just plug and play. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, I think we had over here. There was some, there we go. Or, so, oh. I'm gonna go down here and manage the microphone. So does it work with uh, MFA? Sorry, say it again. Does it work with the multi-factor authentication? Multi-factor? Yeah. Multi-factor. Uh, that's a good question. That's um, your question? Let's, maybe we try to grab that one a little so, more. It's a little bit deeper, John. Yeah. Because we have a, a two-factor authentication in our Tableau server. Yeah, so, two-factor? OK. Yeah, um, yeah let's, let's circle up. So she had it as well. So maybe you three can link okay. up after. I know you had a question. So I was wondering, um, I guess this might be a two-part question. One, can we pre-populate 
Like, can we make a call to the JPI before anything is populated with filters and parameters? Yes. So in, yes. So in you before can load it comes, a dashboard. So you can unload, you can apply those URL filters as oh, basically yeah. as URL parameters. Okay. But you can do both a, a filter mm -hmm. from the dashboard as well as a parameter. Okay. And then can we also make buttons that instead of, like take the filters off the board yeah. and put them like somewhere else for our UX UI sure. guys? Yeah, there's a okay. clear filters um, okay. call. Okay. JS API as well. Yeah, you can put the buttons wherever you want. Uh, in the application. Now we have extensions as well. So that's another way to do it in the dashboard itself for a more custom look and feel. Go ahead. Uh, can you override the styling with CSS of a uh, workbook? Like if we wanted to have like a standard, like. You mean we, we in the dashboard itself? Within the dashboard, because we have problems where people publish stuff with loads of different fonts and weird colors. And yeah, stuff. I mean, like, there's we... a lot of customization you can do in the dashboard, but that's all done through desktop. Yeah, we don't, right. we don't There's have no CSS styling sheet you can point. import. That's a great ask and a great feature request. I would definitely put that on the ideas forum because I've seen it before and I, I deal with embedded customers all day long and they definitely want to use something like CSS to just apply it to the viz and it'd be you know, a blanket, right? But unfortunately, we don't have that today. Um, but definitely bring that up as an idea. Uh, if you've not been to the ideas forum, um, definitely recommend checking it out. So on our community forum page, there's an ideas link um, that where you can go and submit requests like that or feature requests. Yeah. And can you help with if you have to use the URL parameter because like we we built uh, mm -hmm. application or the application with the URL parameter, you can add the you know just like the full button, the button top, the mm -hmm. feature button off. But the button you can't do that there. No, that because that's built in the application itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for example, I think in SharePoint, I was walking a customer through how to embed it the other day, and they can't use the API to do that because, share, uh, sorry, not SharePoint, WordPress, because WordPress won't allow you to do that. So depending on what you're using, I don't think WordPress allows you to make custom buttons yeah. wherever you want, right? That's why you want to use the API. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Actually, that's a good point. Good point, because the extension's in the dashboard itself. Yeah. So if the dashboard loads, the extension will load. Um, there's a gallery. I don't know if you've seen it, but you can see all the extensions that are supported right now. There's a lot of really cool ones, and I think custom buttons is one there's, of them. Yeah, there's a number of different buttons. The biggest thing is that we embed because we don't want, it's hard enough that people are using the dashboard, but to go to a public server and figure out how to open it, read and all that, so we put all our traffic through our uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the portal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to like do something and then render it. Y'all are like, oh, that was next week. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to tell you that. Yeah, so my question is regarding the uh, development on the JavaScript API. I learned that you are going to develop it further, and it's going to be called the Embedding API. So my question is, if you start a project now, should you do it using the um, Embedding API? And how is the existing JavaScript API going to work in the future? Yeah. Like, do you have to reconfigure something, or is it going to be working? So as, as far as I know, and the I'm not exactly sure that the time frame as to when the embedded API is going to be launched, um, but the JS API, most of those functions um, should be pretty seamless to that API. Um, if they do change, I think we'll make a, quite a bit of notation of that in the, the documentation. And I mean, we post our reference, so it, with each iteration of the JS API, any new calls that get made or changed, they're definitely, we, you know, we. we Put that on the page to make sure that everybody. What do you expect that the embedding API will? It's a great be there. question for me. We, we don't know because we're not on the development team. Yeah, we're on the consultant yeah. team, we so to, we, we they don't tell us that. Yeah, it's it's a ways. Um, do you by any chance have an example of how to embed um, on SharePoint sites? And 
also, if you do update the project on Tableau server, do we have to recopy that embed, embedded link onto SharePoint sites, or does it automatically update itself? I think we have documentation on SharePoint embedding. We do have yeah. documentation. It's just the embed code. You copy and paste the embed code into a specific place. Um, and then what was the second question? If the project in Tableau server was updated, does it automatically update the No, I mean, if it's hard-coded, if it's hard-coded, you would have to manually update that, that project. Okay. But if you're using something like the REST API to make a call against it and say, hey, give me projects, and then construct the URL out of those, that list of projects, mm -hmm. it would be automatic. Yeah. I, I, I have two more questions, actually. Okay. So um, on the authentication part, yes. if the web application and the Tableau server are connected to the same uh, like authentication server, like it's dedicated, do we still need to do some type of communication between the web, web app and the Tableau server, or it would be taken care of? No, when you're doing something like, like SAML, for instance, um, you know, Tableau server is set up for SAML as well as the application that you're using. It's basically, um, you're just establishing the session within the SAML, uh, so that once that gets created, you're just passing the assertion um, to inside the, the metadata for the, the, the URL, basically. Um, it gets a little bit more involved than that, but that's, you know, we could pull in the authentication team if you need that. And then the second question would be around automated testing. So if I embed some type of dashboards or charts into my web application, how could I do automated testing? Uh, so we do have some um, utilities you might be familiar with called uh, like Tab Jolt, Tab Mon. So those are um, performance-based testing. So they basically do JMX counting against the server itself. But once you've created all of those new URLs, um, you can take that list and use it against Tab Jolt to then run and make sure that they fire, basically, because then it'll tell you if it's an error, if it doesn't load or not. So that does the testing against the Tableau server? To the server, yeah. Once you've embedded. But once the server's there. So once you've embedded, the, the performance doesn't change, right? Yeah, because it's not dictated. So let's say if I want to, by to the test my GUI. Because if I want to use like protractor, uh, Selenium server, you know, protractor, protractor mm -hmm. uh, type of testing, mm -hmm. can I do that or? There, I mean, I'm sure there's some load gen tools that you could probably leverage and then probably have to follow that up with a, a fiddler trace to make sure that, you know, those, those visualizations are firing and you're getting the right HTTP codes. Okay. And you were next. Oh, sorry. So I have a question about the REST API. Yes. Uh, so one of the most common use cases that we get is like we have to deploy the same dashboard for multiple clients. So what we do is we develop one master copy, yep. and then we have to change the connections mm -hmm. for each client, and um, we have to put an extract. Yep. So can all that uh, can all that be done through the REST API? So that's actually a combination of two utilities of our API. So uh, and by the way, I mentioned Tableau Tools. It actually has all of these. APIs in one wrapper, which is fantastic. Um, you, so you're not having to change into different libraries. But um, you're talking about the document API. So the document API is leveraged to automate the change of, of those connection settings like you're talking about. So I've got, uh, think of moving from test to dev to prod in that fashion, right? So you got a test server. Oh, I got this workbook. I need to change it now, point it to my, my, my dev server or dev SQL server. You're just basically opening up that file, which is basically XML, um, and modifying that. And the document API is what is used to do that. Yeah, but that uh, changing the XML is only for TWB files, right? Like if and I have a and TDS. Yeah, if I have a TWBX. It will also, it will modify that as well. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Uh, anybody else got a question over there? Uh, we use the JS API to kind of uh, give a lot of quick filters on the top and interact with the dashboard filter and drill down. One of the challenges we face is when you have uh, high cardinal columns, mm -hmm. even if there is no selection of values in the filters, all of them get passed down to the dashboard and it kind of takes up the uh, REST API bandwidth. Um, anything you're doing on that space to um, give a so function like or you, something to you, identify. So if you don't actually have any filters selected, instead of the all, it passes every single everything, one of those yeah. dimensions. Yeah. yeah. No, that, 
it's been an issue. Um, I would like to say that it's been fixed. It's not. So um, we'll circle back up on that one for sure with the, with the JS API team. Because I think they're, they're aware of it. OK. Um, but they're, we're still working on how to figure that What's out. What's the best way for me to follow up? So I, I didn't hear that. it. Well, sorry. What was? So when you have a filter selection that you pass to a URL, yeah. it's going to pass the values in that. But if you select all for that filter, it actually passes every single one of the values. It still passes all the values. A, if you've got a filter with yeah. high cardinality, right. it's passing could be passing hundreds of values. So do you need to ever pass all? Is that ever? No, you should just You keep can it. remove that option from uh, the filter itself in Tableau. But it would still pass all the values. OK. Yeah, yeah it still passes all the values. Yeah. And Got then you it. run into a URL length issue, because you know, yeah. 4096 yeah. Yeah. boxed okay. out on most, most browsers. So, but yeah, I, I understand what you're talking about. Um, we can, downstairs in the dev labs, uh -huh. I think it, I think it's in the dev labs, right, Alex? Where all the JS API yeah. guys, as well as the, the, the whole developer platform team. I believe it's in the data village, yes. Yeah. Yep. You bet. Anything else? I know John's got a question. <laughs> Anybody else? Was this helpful, guys? Was this awesome. Good? Thank you for all the feedback. We'd yeah. love it. So Thank you. Great questions. Yeah. High fives are great. Enjoy the fives day tonight out. Are even better. So let's do that. Oh, perfect.